Micah. Micah is a book we've been dealing with in the Bible where the prophets Israel north, Judah south. Micah is going to deal with them both. Now Micah runs right along with Isaiah. Michael comes to be about 750 B.C. Isaiah is called 740 B.C. and it's approximately. So it's 10 years later. Micah ends about 690 B.C. Now, 725 B.C., Samaria, the capital of Israel, falls to Assyria. Assyria invades Judah in 701 BC. There's a lot of events going on in Micaiah's prophecy, especially with the Assyrians. We just did a book about the Assyrians. Nineveh will later become the capital of Assyria. So those very same people that got right with God, now God is using them to conquer His sinful people. But we forget something. Even though God will say, Mr. Nebuchadnezzar, Assyria, Esau, Pharaoh, I want you to get your whip out and I want you to whip my children. All right, God, we'll do it. Y'all right. But don't forget the blessing and the curse of Abraham and Jacob. I will curse them that curse you. And I've always said when, when a nation, when God comes up to you, calls you at your door and says, Hey, listen, I want you to do something in Israel. I mean, they're, they're misbehaving. Well, the idea would be, you're in the grocery store. Someone's child acts up. And they walk up to you and say, listen, will you spank that child? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, and you go and spank that child. And you end up in jail. You had no business spanking that child. You have no business talk, uh, uh, taking punishment, chastisement on Israel. Say, God, you know. We would be so kind if you find somebody else. I wonder when the time will be, if it hasn't already happened already, that God will call on America and say, will you go in there and do this to Israel? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've done a lot of things to Israel. And when you are against Israel, don't say God bless America. That's anti-scriptural. The word of the Lord that came to Micah, the Morshushite. Now that town is about 25 miles southwest of Jerusalem. In the days of Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Both capitals. Those are the two capitals. Samaria is the capital of Israel, and Jerusalem is the capital of Judah. Now watch. Hear ye people. Hearken, O earth. Now the Bible. One of the things to understand in the Bible is Who's God talking to? And there are people that God speaks to. They are the Jews, Hebrew, Israel, children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There are people called Christians, the church, who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. There are the heathen. 
They're neither Jew nor church. You're Gentile. Then there's a place in the Bible where God is speaking to everybody. Does that in Jeremiah about writing about you know be no king on the throne of David no more, but Jesus he says, Oh or her, her, write this man childless. We got a thing here written to the earth. The ark was spoken to Noah in Noah's time. Not a bunch of people in America to build an ark. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a worker that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Everybody who's involved in that ark encounter is going to stand before God one day and say, huh, What about the money you collected? What was that, what was that nonsense you built? I didn't make no dinosaurs. You had the bones all messed up. I don't know. And all that therein is. So this is speaking to everybody. <clears throat> Let the Lord God be witness against you. And this would be going to the courtroom. All right, call up your witness. Lord Jehovah. <laughs> You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God, so help me me. The Lord from his holy temple. You say, okay, that's Jerusalem. That's my church. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place and will come down. That holy temple is in heaven, not here on the earth. What we're looking at in verses 3 and 4 is the second advent. God kept telling Moses, all right, this is how I want you to do with the tabernacle, as I showed you the pattern in the mount. This is what you do with the tabernacle, as I showed you on the mount. This is, what, this is what, how you're supposed to do it, as I showed you the pattern. God took Moses like he did John, and into heaven he went. John saw the, t the temple... John saw the ark. No matter what the Raiders of the Lost Ark and Harrison Ford, the Germans didn't take it. God says, all right, get out of here. That ark, you know, we talk about Enoch being raptured. That ark was raptured to heaven. That's where it is, in search of the ark. And they go all over the earth. It's not on the earth. And the Christians say, oh, you know, house of God. It's not our church building. There is no house of God right now. It's been destroyed, and the Muslims are there with the dumb of the rock. Oh, great America. Great. No, our country is New Jerusalem. For behold, the Lord, Jehovah, come forth out of his place heaven now this is not Jesus the first advent will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth Jesus came the first time he came into a manger in Judah of Bethlehem And the mountain shall be molten under it. When Jesus came the first time, the world did not recognize it. The angels had to go to the shepherds. Hey, something just wonderful happened in the prophecies of the word of God. The Messiah has been born. There's no mountains, mountain. The only sign there was that we we're told two or three years later that the, 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 the Magi followed his star. When the shepherds, there were all kinds of stars, hopping, skipping, and jumping, and dancing. The angels, Revelation 1. Under him, the valley shall clap. When Jesus was born, the valleys didn't split open. 
as wax before the fire and as water is poured down out of a steep place. That didn't happen the first advent. All right, here we go. For the transgression of Jacob, that's Israel entirely. Jacob was a sinner. Is all this. So there have been sins of Jacob inherited into his boys, inherited to the grandchildren. For the sins of the house of Israel. They're God's people. And they're sinners. We are Christians. And we are sinners. Israel upset their God, their groom. The bride of God, Jehovah, is Israel. And he's upset with them. And God upset with them. The bride of Jesus Christ is the Christian. And the statement that we find in Revelation 3 before the rapture, it makes Jesus sick. Because we transgress against God. So it would be likely good that if we looked at the Old Testament that we could see the sins of us and the sins of all the nations. What's going to happen with India with all their gods? Well, there are nations in the Bible that had all their gods. There was even one time in the Bible there was a war. And the losers took off, ran away, and the winners came along and picked up the losers' gods and made them gods. You say, what's that? They do that today. You got two ball teams they are playing, and they all get trophies. Because we can't have no more losers. History is repeating itself, and no matter if you change it, try to erase it, whatever you want to do with it, History repeats itself. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? They're all one family. What are the high places of Judah? Aren't they not in Jerusalem? And you can go back and study Jeremiah. Jeremiah had altars on every street corner. They had... Uh, the worship of gods and statues. And that, listen, they had Baptist churches every corner with their altars. And they get up Sunday morning, oh God, we thank you, you are in the house of God today. No other house of God. And to conclude this message, if you come on up to this altar... Well, there's a Baptist church altar three miles from you. Four miles. And then you got Catholic altars. Two miles. You got Presbyterian altars five miles. Across the street you got an altar where they sit at it and they order booze called the bar. And they make their requests to their gods. I'll have another shot. High place. We, we got a steeple. All the world now, Pastor, they put a steeple. All the world will know a church. I've seen pictures. The only way they will see your church is if you're in the parking lot because they can't see your church from the road with all the trees. I sit in front of a church, hold a sign, and I preach. I'll be talking to some people. And they'll, and they'll say, well, who are you? I say, you know, I'm just here. I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. Why here? I say, well, because my church is right there. Oh, I didn't know there was a church there. Wow. Because people. I didn't know that. 
Your steeples and your light and your salt don't do nothing unless you tell them, Hey, I'm a Christian. This is where I go. They don't know. High places where they worship the gods. That's the high places they did back in Babel. Which turned to be Babylon. You hear how high those walls in Babylon were, and the gates, and the chariot races? How we have high places here in America. We're trying to get to Mars and trying to get to Uranus. Well, we got the Hubble telescope. We're trying to launch the, the dragon. China now wants to beat us to the moon. I thought we were already on the moon. How does China want to beat us on the moon if we already were on the moon, which we probably weren't? I don't believe we landed on the moon. Well, I'm one of them conspiracy theorists. But we want to get up like they did in Babel without God. And listen, Babel, they weren't going to get up to meet God. They were going to go to the heavens on their own power. They didn't say anything about God. Therefore, I will make Samaria as the capital of Israel and heat of the field, a big pile. That's called today in archaeology a tell, T-E-L. Tel Aviv is a city of Aviv that's built on a mound, built on mounds and built on mounds of cities that have been destroyed. That's what tells are. Here was a city destroyed. They built a city on top of that city. That was destroyed. They built a city on top of that city. It's a bunch of heat. As a planting of a vineyard. Let's keep putting new dirt on it. All right, build up. Go put new dirt on it and build up. I will pour down the stone there up into the valley. I'm going to destroy your walls. I'm going to destroy your city, your home. God, I will discover the foundations thereof. Assyria goes into captivity, 722 B.C., before Judah goes into captivity. And they did an excellent job, like Babylon did an excellent job with Judah. That all the graven images, idolatry, therefore shall be beaten to pieces. God is against graven images, even though you call them aids to worship. There's nothing more sickening for a Christian who professes the blood of Jesus Christ and hangs a cross between their boobs, or gets a tattoo of a cross, or scripture, when the Bible says you shall not make marks upon the, your flesh for the dead. But well, we're doing it. For, uh, sometimes it's about the resurrection. That's about death. Sometimes you have a skull. That's about death. The Bible says clearly, as much as, as a man shall not wear what pertains to a woman, a woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. So Saul wore, wore a skirt. The priest wore a girdle. Let me keep going. The women wore veils like you get upset that the women of Muslims wear veils. Wait a minute. You got things all confused. You want a Bible that will say and will do what you believe and what you want. And if, 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 the, if the tiles don't have the letters for you to make the word on the Scrabble board, you, you want to take those tiles and throw them back in the bag and get new ones. Let 
Graven image is something that's been made purposely. And then you forget about your crucifix that cursed be he that hangeth on a tree. That crucifix is a curse in the law and in the church age because I believe it is Paul that wrote cursed he that hangs on a tree. As it was written in the law. You are to take them down before the sun went down. God says, I, I, I'm going to beat them all in pieces. And all the hires thereof shall be burnt with fire. And the hires there is the gifts and the bribery. And we're going to look at that word again coming up, har harlotry. You know, you went to that priest and you gave him extortion money. For that crime you did, you paid the priest to God to exalt you. It's called indulgences. And that's one of the things that ticked Martin Luther off. That's one of the things he nailed to the door of the church. I can't see no indulgences in the Bible. That'd be men who would plan to kill somebody, rob somebody. Before or after they do it, they would go see the priest. And they paid the priest, and the priest said, Bless you, my child. Three Hail Marys and four Our Fathers. That's the Catholic Church. People think in the Catholic Church they do that today. If they go and burn a candle, I don't know what they charge today. When I went to the Catholic Church, St. Mary, I was a little boy and I saw them light candles. I went and lit a candle. I, I didn't know. And somebody, I, I don't know who it was, they said, the Son, did you put a quarter in the, and there was a little box there for, for, for coins. Did you put your quarter in the box? Said, no, sir, I didn't put no quarter. I said, Son, in order to light a candle, you've got to put a quarter in there. I said, well, I, I don't have a quarter. The guy took a quarter out of his pocket and put a quarter in there for me. That's indulgence. That's bribery. That's gifts. You know, you can get Uncle So-and-So or Auntie So-and-So out of purgatory sooner if you burn those candles. If you pay the priest, he won't pray. Okay? Oh, I was going to say something about that. The idols, there I will just I, I will lay desolate. Now, the idols and the image, images, you know, that picture, that icon. The idols that St. Christopher, you had on the dashboard of your car, is now sitting in the junkyard that St. Christopher wasn't doing his job. The idols that Mary on the half shell. Sitting in your front lawn. And you got to give her a bath because she can't clean herself. And yes, you got, listen, if you were a good Catholic and you clean off Mary in your front lawn, you were given heavenly point. Just as much as a Baptist, I heard tell, if you mow the church lawn, you'll get crowns, rewards. That's why I say Baptist Catholic. When I, when I was at St. Mary in, in New England, there, there were times that they, they would take the statue of Mary, She would, they would parade her through, I think it's Huntington Street, I forget, and they would stick money to her. She couldn't walk herself, you had to carry her, that's an idol. In the Baptist church, you got idols. He's called the pastor. He's called the song director. He's called George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? For she gathered it of the hire of the harlot. Uh, you remember Hosea? Remember all the hire tree? Whoredoms? 
That wife you're going to marry, she's a whore? Here it is again. Those priests of that religion, and not, not just Catholic, throughout their history, the Babylonian, the, the Pharaoh religion, the Roman religion, the Greek religion, you paid that priest to do something for you. That's a whore. Some of your pastors, you got to pay to do your wedding or your funeral. You're a member of that church. You, you, you faithfully attend that church. I'm not talking about somebody who goes to church you know, maybe two times a year, doesn't put much. Uh, I, I ain't talking about, I'm talking about someone who's faithful. The person that died, or the person you're married, you're both members of that church. You've both been faithful to that church. And you pay that pastor for that. That's harlotry. I, I know you didn't like it. And they shall return to the hire of a harlot. That's gifts. I mean, look at Judah. We didn't realize it was Tamar. What will you give me? He said, I'll give you a kid of the goats. Well, you don't have a kid to go. What will you give? You? I'll give you my staff, my bracelet, and something else. She ended up keeping those until the time needed. He didn't give her money. He was going to give her a kid to go. He did give her a kid, not of the goats. And those two children, one of those children, is the line of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I will wail and howl. Now, that's not God. I don't know if that's Micah speaking, or he's speaking for the people of, of Israel. I will go stripped and naked. God be Israel, because not God. Now, stripped and naked is not always necessary. You know, you're going to walk around and run around the city undressed. You're going to wake up like you do, like Belshazzar woke up, and you're in hell and you have nothing. It's all gone. You had that big party. You had the tables. You had all the wine. You had all the women. You had all the friends. And you're in darkness. You don't even know where you are. I bet she wants a drink of wine today. I bet you just take a little dip of wine, put it in his finger, I bet. How about a little candle, a little light from that candlestick that was up against the wall? The Bible says hell is darkness. I'll make a wailing like dragons. I never heard that. And a mourning as the owl. Who? Ooh. And you, you can get a Google online. You can uh, owl hooping or owl song. Kind of lonely. He's all by himself. For her wound is in incurable. It's it, it's terminal. There's no care. There's no doctors. No ailments. No medication. And Isaiah will say the same thing. It, it, it's detestable wounds. It's gross. It stinks. Putrefying. Let me see if I have a note there. I think he would have a note. Going back to it. Isaiah said something. For it is come into Judah. 
Judah has picked up the sin and worse than Israel. When you compare Hosea, Micah, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, Jer uh, uh, Jer Judah should got to the point when they saw their brother with Assyria. Ooh, we better stop. You know, when you got siblings in the house and one of them steals the cookies and he get he gets the belt across his rear end, the other ones in the house will be, I think I'll ask mom for a cookie. His brother can't sit down for two days. No, what's going on with Judah is, is, is the punishment has been upon their sibling, and they walk in and go, let's take a cookie. I'm going to take all the cookies. Nothing's going to happen to me. They even got to the point to say, you know, it's all because we haven't blessed, we haven't honored the Queen of Heaven. And we've taken all the oil and all the fruits and all that God's given to us, and it's our enemies that are blessing us. I mean, it's not God in America, though. They say God bless America. China is taking care of us. Taiwan. The pipeline. Everything and anything but God. And nothing's going to happen to us in America because we're Americans. Declare it not in Gath. That's the very place where Saul and his sons died in battle. That's the Philippian, that's the Philistine land. But you know the news media, do, everything that Israel does wrong, right into the newspapers go. Have an enemy of Israel launch missiles, 28,000 of them, into Israel. And there's not a word, there's not a feat. Israel launches in retaliation against the enemy. And what they do is they take a whole group of people and they put them in an abandoned hospital. And those rockets hit that abandoned hospital. Those people, oh, look, they hit a hospital, abandoned. And they kill all these people that they told them to go meet in a... We're going to have a, a training class. We're going to have, you know, a voting. We're going to have something of our religion, something of our meat here. Friend, they did that in Korea. They did that in Vietnam. People were staged to be where the Americans would be attacked. And all the people that were killed, it was because the enemy told the people to be there. And you morons believe the media. And you believe the media today. The house of Ephraim ruled thyself in dust. Ephraim means dust. Pass ye away, thou inhabitant of Zephyrim. Having thy shame naked be revealed. Listen, that's what judgments are going to do. Save their law. That, that Christian is, oh, I just love you, brother. I, I, I pray for you all the time. I am thinking about, and if he's lying to you, at the judgment, going to be like, okay, man, he spoke about you. He hated you. He just, you know, he lied to you. We have such a great pastor on now, the judgment will realize how great he is. If he's great at all. You may find out that your pastor goes into the great white throne judgment. You may find out things about your children, your spouse, your co-workers. 
You might even find that when the rapture of the church, you might find people in the clouds you never even thought would be there, and then the people you knew were going to be there are not. The heavens of Zanem came not forth in the morning of the Beth field, Beth's house. One is an interesting note. That's not it. And these are just cities and areas. Then when the axe falls, the judgment falls. There's going to be great hurt. All truth is going to be revealed. It'd be like a guy, he's at work. And his boss says to him, you know what, you're a great employee. You finish those contracts ahead of time and it went good. I mean, they like it. They're going to make me propose. I'll tell you what. Go home the rest of the day. And I'll pay you for the rest of the day. Take the rest of the day off. I'll pay you for it. Oh, wow, boss. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. Guy, guy drives home. Goes open, opens up his, his house door. Opens up the bedroom door. And there's his wife with another man. There's a mother, she's there, she's gathering all the clothes, all the laundry, it's laundry day. She opens up her daughter's door. Her daughter's got the, got the window open. She's sitting there, she's smoking dope and shooting drugs in her arm. A man works for the company. He, he, uh, uh, here we go. I, I, this, this is a real story. I won't, I won't leave the names out. The guy works for this company. And it's owned by a man. Not a big company. It's owned by a man. And the worker had to have surgery. And he would be incapacitated for a long time. Surgery on his back. And his spine. And he goes in for that surgery. And they gotta fuse a few of the, the spine together. And he has to go there, he has to go into that rehab and get back into working, get back up to strength. And during that time he realizes that his employer has sold the business. And the new employer, the new owner. I don't need you. I don't need you people. I've got my own people. You're fired. Your pension's gone. Your health insurance is gone. Everything's gone. Bye. That's a very true story. I, I don't know how true to the fact. I mean, is I don't know every detail. How about, what if the rapture happened while you're in church? And that trump blows, your name is called, and you go up, and as you go up, you see your pastor still there, giving the message to the people. How about it? How about the woman who played the piano in your church? She's at the judgment seat of Christ. And everything's burnt. She was having an affair with one of the deacons, Mary. This one guy in the church was illicit activities with the young ones. How about a pastor having sex with a 16 year old in his office on his floor? That just happened. I mean, it was just revealed. 
How about some of your members of your convention when you found out that, you know, there was sexual activity going and, and the convention just swept it underneath the floor? What about it? This is what's going to happen when Assyria comes in and, and and there will be nakedness, too. When you got that modest woman, and maybe you had eyes for her, and she's been raped, and she's been forced upon by the Assyrian army, and she's left to run through the city naked, there you are, watching her. Have you not seen footage? Have you not seen pictures? Have you not seen videos? of books about the Jews that were in the Holocaust of World War II. They were in these places. They were in those trains. They, they, they were put into those execution uh, 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 crematoriums naked. Naked as the day they were born. There, there, there was some time in those things that they went to the bathroom on each other. Satan hates the Jew. For the inhabitant of Mara, and I'm saying these names wrong, I apologize, waited carefully for good. They wanted a good. But evil came down from the Lord. From the Lord unto the gate of Jerusalem. That's, that's Judah. Well, it's not going to happen to us. We're going to get good. We're a good church. We're good Christians. Why the doors closed, Pastor? COVID. Pastor, where was this family? They got COVID and they died. But we're good. We're rich. We're wonderful. We don't have no need of nothing. What does it say in verse 8? Go stripped and naked. What did God says? You're naked, regent, poor, and miserable. Just like Israel. History repeats itself. Oh, we can't look at porn. Take the porn off your computer. Yeah, you do it. Don't get the porn magazine. Yeah, don't watch the porn movies and all that. Can you imagine what Jeremiah saw when he walked the streets of Jerusalem in the Book of Lamentations? Probably what they did with the most beautiful women that were there. Listen, every soldier goes to a whorehouse. How do you know that? Where did they go in Jericho? Went to the whore's house. Come on, all the people in Jericho, what house did they end up? They ended up in the whore house. What's it about with Hosea? About the whore. What's the Baptist church? They're whores. They'll do anything to get the people to come to church. All are welcome. We'll give them a nice Eastern message. We'll even, you know, put it Resurrection Sunday, you know, for those, you know, just nonsense. We'll have a birthday for Jesus. O thou inhabitants of Lachish, bind a chariot to the swift beast and get ready to get out of here. Build a car with gas. It's too expensive. <laughs> I like, there's a thing going on. Um, um, and I don't laugh at too much of the jokes like that. But there's a thing going on Facebook right now. The reason why the four horsemen in the apocalypse is because gasoline is so expensive. <laughs> Maybe. What would be the fact is if God puts gasoline so expensive that you will go back to horse warfare? Why not use the tanks? 
too expensive. Wouldn't it be great if we had the great submarines parked and we can't use them in port? We get the battleships, we can't use them. Well, how are we going to fight them? Only then we got some horses. I don't know. Get out of here. Get ready to get out of here. She's, she is the beginning of the sin of the daughter of Zion, that's Judah, and that's Jerusalem. For the transgressions, plural, of Israel were found in the Jerusalem. What was going on in Israel is going on in, in Judah. And when you look at the kings, and I forget his name, I think it's one of the kings we mentioned. I'm not, I'm only, I forget. But there was a king that went into Israel and joined legacy with Israel and got fouled up with all that mess and made a league with the, with the sins and the religion, I, I forget the name, of Israel and brought it back into Jerusalem. And there were many times that that doors of that temple was shut. There was even other altars and all put in the spot in the Lord's house. And you say, well, if we're so bad as a church styling, why doesn't God send a fire down? Why doesn't he kill us like that husband and wife in the book of Acts? Because he did not destroy Jerusalem right away in the book of Jeremiah. He said, just keep preaching, Jeremiah. They ain't listening. I don't care. Keep preaching. Lord, they put me in jail. Hold on. I'm protecting you. In jail? Yep. One day the axe fell in Judah. One day the axe fell in Israel. One day the axe will fall upon the axe, uh, the church. Therefore shalt thou give presents, gifts, to Morsha Gath. The houses of Ashdod shall be a lie unto the kings of Israel. Lies. What's going on in the church today? They're lying. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. Yet will I bring a hair inheritance unto thee, O inhabitant of Marcia. And these are just places. He shall come unto Adullam, the glory of Israel. So somebody's coming by God, and he's going to get the inheritance. I don't know who. Abdullah was one of the places that David used to hide. I'll leave you to go and look up some of these names. They're interesting. Because they're history that repeated itself. We don't have time. When we looked at Gath, hey, what happened in Gath? That's where Saul died. That wicked Saul, he ought to die. Jonathan too? You know, there was a point if Jonathan would have stayed with David. No, but he went back to his dad. Make the ball. A lot of Christians are doing that. In the Bible, when you made yourself ball, don't get ready for this. 
It was for the dead. The Catholic Church, certain, they, they would cut that little their hair except that one little spot. And I forget what the Jews called their little beanie. I forget what it's called. Look, it'd be like, you know, we're not wearing a beanie, but look, look, look at our hair. Now, if you're bald naturally, okay. But if you make yourself bald, why? Pole, that means cut your hair, head count, for the delicate children. What about the abortion? All the abortion. What about the children? And forget that children are being stolen, children are being used in sex trade, uh, but don't do nothing about that. Children are being starved by their parents so their parents can buy tobacco, alcohol, and tattoos, and lottery tickets, but not feed their children. And go stand in a free food line. I tell you, if I found someone standing in line and they got all these tattoos, get out of line. You can afford the tattoos. What's that in your pocket? Cigarettes? E cigarettes? Get out of the line. You can afford those. You can buy your children food. Enlarging their boldness, making it more bold. As the eagle. Are you ready? Oh no, he's not going to stay it. The American bald eagle? For they are gone into captivity from... You know why they're making self bold? Because Israel's just gone into captivity. They're dying to so we'll cut our hair for God. Absalom cut his hair and made a big show of it. He's a type of Antichrist. He was an enemy of David. 